Okay, now joined by uh, Virginia Tech student athletes, uh, Seth Allen and Zach Leday. Gentlemen, welcome to Buffalo. Glad to have you here. We'll open up uh, for questions for them at this time. Please raise your hand and we'll get a microphone to you. And if you please give your name and affiliation. Start right down front there. Uh, Mark Berman, the Roanoke Times. Uh, guys, uh, obviously Wisconsin's got a lot of size. How worried are you about having to deal with those guys in the paint, especially uh, you know when you got a, a team that's trying to avoid foul trouble? Uh, we're just gonna go out there and play as hard as possible. Every team is bigger than us, so it's not nothing new. So we're just gonna go play as hard as possible, try to box out, get the rebound. Set. Oh, uh, I agree with Zach. Um, that's kind of been our Achilles heel all season, so uh, we're used to it. Uh, we just got to fight hard for rebounds and position and um, limit them to one shot. Other questions? Follow up here. Go ahead, Mark. Uh, guys, what have you been doing since you got to Buffalo? And, you know, with this being your one and only NCAA tournament experience of your career, how much are you trying to kind of soak everything in this week here in Buffalo? Um, we've just been, we practice, uh, they go and lift in the morning, um, we eat, we watch a lot of film, we do homework, um, we chill together. I mean, it's, it's all snow outside, so we're not leaving the <laughs> hotel for walks or golfing or nothing, but, um, yeah, we just, we do a lot of things in the hotel and just a lot of, like, team stuff. Yeah, nope. we just chill, we don't really do nothing. Much. No golf planned at all this trip. Nah, no, no golfing no. in the snow. Nah, okay. nah maybe no. some, maybe some snow, some snow, uh, some snow. Snow people. angels. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Oh yeah, we went to the Buffalo Bills facility. Oh, oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. That was cool. Yeah. Forgot about that. Back here. Hi guys, Joe Beamer, WBEN. Um, two of your last three games, you blew second half leads. Uh, what do you take away from that, and what are you going to change for the Wisconsin game? Can you say that again, please? Uh, I'm sorry. Two of your last three games, uh, you guys blew second half leads, Wake Forest and Florida State. What do you take away from that going into the Wisconsin game? Um, I think that we just got to just play our game, take it possession by a time. Uh, we can't get ahead of ourselves if we're up or down. We just got to just play by media timeouts and try to win media timeouts. Um, I think that when we look like, it's like for a whole game, like we look ahead of a whole game, it, it, it's hard for us. So when we just break it down into little bits, it's uh, easier for us. Right here, in front left here. Hi, Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. Uh, this is for both you guys. Uh, what's it like as a former starter coming off the bench? And what do you think it brings to you? What do you think it has brought to your team having you two come off the bench uh, with all the scoring you do? Zach, you want to start? Uh, I say that it helps our team because anybody can take any role and no one's entitled to start or anything like that. So just by playing that and seeing how hard you got to work, it doesn't matter who starts, it's whoever plays the hardest. And I feel like we give a big amount of energy coming off the bench and it gets other people's confidence up. I guess people like starting, it doesn't really matter to us. We just want to come and play as long as possible and be in the game, affecting the game. So. Um, I think that uh, Coach Buzz always tells us to embrace like whatever's in front of us, whether it be a game, uh, a role, um, anything. So um, I think me and Zach done a great job of just embracing our role coming off the bench. Um, it's hard sometimes, you know, guys are already getting past their first win, and we come in on our first win trying to keep up with them. They're already loose. So, I mean, it's been tough sometimes, but you just got to fight through it and just keep going. Um, Try to be, we just try to play hard off the bench and just bring energy and excitement to the game. Um, our teammates, uh, they know all of us could start, like in, any of us. We, we play seven, eight guys. So, uh, I mean, anybody, you could start. We play a lot of guards, so you could really just put anybody in there. So it doesn't really matter who starts. It's, it's about who finishes and who's on top at the end of the game, um, each team. Let's go right here. Ava Wallace with the Washington Post. Um, Seth, you said win the media timeouts. That sounds like a buzz thing. What do you mean by that? Um, well, each um, each game has ten media timeouts. Uh, so um, we just every, each four minutes, we just try to win the four minutes. Uh, we call them like uh, ATOs, like after timeouts. So um, when we come out of the timeouts, we try to win those possessions. That are uh, there's a one possession for them, and there's one possession for us, and that's what counts towards the ATO. 
So when we talk about winning media timeouts, um, so if it's 16 minutes and me and Zach are coming in off the bench, when it hits 12 minutes, we want to do better, get more stops before it gets 12 minutes than the other team. So instead of just being like, before halftime, let's win. Well, let, like we try to break it into media timeouts. Like, well, let's win this media timeout. Let's see how good we could do this media timeout. So it's, it's the time in between, not necessarily you guys being on the sideline talking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. And then um, we talked to you so much about what it meant to just get to the tournament, and you said how hungry you guys were for more. So it's kind of a silly question, but other than obviously advancing, what, does a, what would a, a win mean uh, just in terms of direction of the program? And, and for you guys, it's validation as well. Uh, I think it would be huge just for everybody just to keep this run going. It's been a special story. We don't play that many guys. We're small, all the stuff that's been written about us. And uh, it's really special, and we just want to keep it going. We just want to play together as long as possible and play as hard as possible for each other and just be there for one another. So it would be really special to get wins in this tournament and just keep on going. But we got to start off with this one. Mark, right down front. Uh, as you guys watch film of Wisconsin, what, what stands out to you about Ethan Happ and, and Nigel Hayes? And, you know, just one of the better post games, two of the better inside players you, you're going to be facing this year? Um, I say they have very unique games. Uh, Happ likes to back you down and get you into the basket, and he's really good at pivoting and going different ways. He's a good defender as well, he gets a lot of steals. He leads the team in a lot of categories. And Hayes is very versatile. He likes to do a lot, bring the ball up. He can rebound. He can shoot the mid-range to three-pointers. He can get on the glass. But I say what's big for us is just keeping them off the glass, contesting their shots, uh, not falling for the moves, and just keeping them off the glass. And I think that we'll be fine if we do that. Is there a follow-up, Mark? Uh, when you watched Wisconsin on film, did, did they remind you of anybody who played this year? Is, is it like could be like playing Virginia maybe or, or anybody that you've you've dealt with this year before? Um, they're similar to Virginia. Uh, they're like a Big Ten version of Virginia kind of. Um, being that they uh, they play slower than most teams, they kind of want to control and play at their own pace. Um, part of that is how they play. Part of like the style of play they have, and they have like two really good postmen. So throwing it in and playing out the post takes patience and they want to guard you for a long so you can't take quick shots uh, against them so they're a really tough team and kind of similar to Virginia except they play a little bit more one-on-one -on -one ball than Virginia does they uh they throw it in and just space and let him go to work where Virginia's coming off of down screens and trying to just lull you to sleep a lot any other questions for either Zach or Seth I got one more you know, is this a, because of their size and all that, is this a tough matchup? Or do you look at it and say, oh, I, I think we can shoot threes against these guys. It's not going to be too bad. You know, what, what kind of, uh, uh, you know, what, what's your assessment of how tough a game this might be for you or not? I think we just got to go into it playing our game. I mean, part of it, you want to know what the other team does. You want to know how they play. But um, you can't bend towards their, their style. You got to just enforce how we play. and. We play fast, we play hard, we play together, we play with each other, we play smart. Um, so I think that's really what's most important going into tomorrow night. Uh, are we going to play like Virginia Tech or, or is Wisconsin going to control the pace and we're going to play it their style? Okay, final question. Uh, everyone was obviously very excited on, on Sunday uh, when you guys got in. Uh, what, what's been the mood of the team like uh, since, since we last saw you on Sunday? What's kind of the uh, what, what's everyone been like at the, at the hotel these last few days? <laughs> Everybody's uh, looking at you, Zach. You know, we've just been going, you know, just going crazy, running up and down the hall. No, nah, I'm playing. <laughs> but uh, uh, everybody was really happy when we got in. They wanted to see where we were going. We saw we were going to Buffalo, and it was snowing and stuff. So that was cool, just getting out. I'm from Texas, so I don't really see no snow like that. But... Um, after we found out where we got in, I mean, everybody was just all business then. I mean, everybody's been watching film. Even the young boys been watching film. Uh, just watching how Wisconsin plays. I think I've watched like six or seven of their games. I watched like the Michigan game like three times in like the past two days. So, I mean, everybody's just watching film and just 
getting ready for the matchup and just trying to get used to tendencies and stuff like that and trying to get an advantage, that's important. Trying to get an advantage on your opponent in a short amount of time in a tournament like this. So that's what everybody's been doing. That's what I think. So. Yeah. Zach, Seth, thanks a lot for your time. Appreciate Good luck it. to you tomorrow. Thank you. Can we have these? Uh, yeah, we're going to take them down. All right, bet. <laughs>
Joined now by uh, Virginia Tech head coach Buzz Williams. Coach, welcome to Buffalo. Great to have your team here. Thank Go you. ahead and uh, open up with uh, questions. If you'd please raise your hand, we'll get a microphone to you. Please give your name and affiliation. Uh, before you ask your first question, let's start right down here with Mark to your right there. Mark uh, Berman, The Roanoke Times. Hello, Buzz. Um, now that you've had some days to look at Wisconsin, how do you go about defending you know, big guys like Happ and, and Hayes, and, and especially for a team that wants to avoid uh, getting in foul trouble? Yeah, it'll, it'll be a constant stress for us. I don't know that we have a simple answer, and I don't know if one answer um, is suffice. I think we'll have to do multiple things. Uh, both of those guys are better than our guys. Um, both of them can get you in foul trouble. Uh, both of them are very good one-on-one -on -one scorers. Uh, they have three really good one-on-one -on -one scorers, but within 15, 16 feet, both of those two guys are really good. Go right uh, here in the center. Norm Wood from the Daily Press in Newport News, Virginia. Buzz, you mentioned Sunday night that your job is kind of to get these guys not to be satisfied with the participation trophy and want to hang around a little while. Have you been satisfied with the level of focus that they've had between you know, having a little bit of fun and, and enjoying the experience and, and dealing with the task at hand, or will you really have that answer until 940 tomorrow night? Well, I, I think the only way to judge it, Norm, is um, daily. And I think their concentration level has been uh, superb. Uh, I don't want to be a taskmaster master as a coach relative to not being satisfied, while at the same time this is a memory of a lifetime for them. So I, I don't I hope that what I said didn't come across in a negative way, uh, but I also think that uh, it is part of my job, part of my role uh, to push them to be their absolute best. And that doesn't mean that we're going to win every game, but uh, since Sunday night, uh, we had to abort our original travel plan because of the weather. I thought they handled that well. We've become the most diverse uh, program ever relative to altered travel plans. So they, they kind of thought it was normal. Um, but our two practices here and our three film sessions thus far have been outstanding. And I think that um, things change when you're uh, playing games after spring break because guys understand the magnitude of what it is. Even if they haven't done it as best they can, they understand that something about this is different. And I think our guys have been really good. Right in front here. Tom Oates, Wisconsin State Journal. How you doing? How Good you to doing, see you. Buzz? Nice yes, sir. To see you. Um, I was just curious as to wh why you brought uh, Zach and S Seth off the bench. What went into that decision? And more importantly, what has it given you? Because it must be giving you something because you've stuck with it. Well, uh, it, it started uh, in the right way. Um, we scrimmaged South Carolina on the last Saturday of October. And in the first 10 minutes, as you would expect playing a team uh, coached by Frank, uh, Seth got hurt. So uh, we then, uh, that was on a Saturday. Uh, the Thursday before our second scrimmage, which was at George Mason, uh, Zach got an offensive rebound, which is rare, and got hit in the head. And uh, Obviously, they're making movies about concussions now. And so he was out for the next 14 days. Our first game was the second Friday in November. Uh, Seth was healthy by then. Zach wasn't healthy by then. But both had miss, missed a lot of practice. And so it just started as it would for anybody else. And I think what's happened is uh, Hadim, our freshman center who starts, was forced into that role, and I think he's handled it fairly well. And it's probably kept Zach out of more foul trouble than we would have anticipated. Uh, for Seth, because he's a ball guard, he can play any position. And so it, um, we've only suited up eight guys all year long, uh, but the last eight games we've suited up seven. So there wasn't ever a lot of maneuverability, but over the last eight games there's been zero maneuverability. And as it transpired, Tom, what I mentioned to our team was, I think it was best for our team, and it was right in how it started. But as it evolved and morphed into something else, I thought it was a great example of what I want our program to be, and that's to be selfless. So it's two redshirt seniors, 
the two oldest kids on the team. You can argue the two most productive players on the team, the only guys that would be considered in some sort of stretch to get an all-conference vote of some sort, and they're both coming off the bench. Uh, and in an unspoken way, and you're the only one that's ever had enough sense to ask, um, I kind of like that I get to answer it on this stage because I think it speaks to the fabric of what we want to be about. I'm going to go in the back to Mark, and then we'll come up here. Uh, hi, Mark Tracy from the New York Times. On a lighter note, we had uh, Coach Huggins in here earlier, and uh, he was talking about how the origin of his game day dress is he was sweating a lot through a suit at halftime and decided, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do what I'm going to do. Uh, your, your battles with this uh, have been well documented, and I was wondering if you've ever considered uh, going that route. Yeah, uh, Coach is uh, first ballot Hall of Famer. He'll be the next guy that's uh, in the Hall of Fame that's still employed as a coach. Uh, there's only three of those left in our, in our world in college basketball, and he's one of them. Uh, coach can wear whatever he wants to wear. Where I'm from, the way I was brought up, um, you should always tuck your shirt in and you should always tie your shoes. And if for some reason you ever get a job that requires a college degree, it's the most respectful thing to start out in a tie. And uh, so uh, it's partly, mostly just because of how I was raised. And uh, if I had as much equity, and I never will, as Coach Hugs. Uh, I might get that company that sponsors him with the pullover. I might, I might do the same thing. <laughs> Down uh, right here in the front left. Hi, Jim Polzine from Wisconsin State Journal. Buzz, you're dealing with a bunch of guys on your team that haven't been in an NCAA tournament, don't know what it's like. Wisconsin has two guys in Koenig and Hayes that have played in 14 NCAA tournament games, been part of 11 wins. Um, is that a legitimate concern, or do you think experience like that is, is overblown? Uh, no, I don't think it's overblown at all. Um, Four of their five starters in some capacity or another, like you mentioned, have played in a Final Four, have played in a national championship game, and have played in a Sweet 16. Um, we have a roster full of guys who tomorrow night, that will be their first time ever playing on a court that has an NCAA blue sticker on it. Um, we, we can't compare uh, to the job that Coach Ryan and Coach Guard have done, nor the experience uh, that their roster has. I, I think uh, when you look at how Wisconsin has played, what were they, seven and five when Greg took over? And then it went, uh, that was December the 15th after Corpus Christi. They were seven and five, and then they ran it to nine and nine. And then uh, they end up in the Sweet 16, and Coach Alvarez has to hire him. Uh, and they go to the Sweet 16. And then they uh, beat Syracuse, they beat Oklahoma. Um, two Final Four teams from last year in non-conference play. They beat Georgetown. Um, they beat Carolina, didn't they? Played, played Carolina but lost, right? And then started 10-1 and one in non-conference play. I mean, uh, I, 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 obviously I've loved Coach Ryan forever, and I've known Coach Guard since uh, 15 years ago. But I, I think the, the consistency of the program and what they've meant um, the Hokies were not even in that same sphere. Do you have a question from the center? Yep, microphone up. Nope, one more. And then we'll go here. Um, Buzz, we know you love your football coaches. You have to introduce yourself, oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. Ava Wallace with the Washington Post. I'm just kidding. Good coach. We know you love your football I, I, when coaches. When I get fired, I'm going to do that. <laughs> you have to wear a suit for that anyways. Um. <laughs> yeah, I can wear a pullover right. from a man from the Times. Um, was it uh, enjoyable or special for you to meet with um, Sean McDermott? We saw that you guys got to go to the Bills facility, and, and what did he tell you guys? Anything that particularly captured your attention, I guess? Yeah, uh, I have way more football coaching friends than I do basketball coaching friends. Um, and for whatever reason, because of kind of how those relationships started, I've been able to develop really sound relationships with multiple NFL guys. I love Coach McDermott's story, right? He's 42. And he started in the lowest position you can in Philly for Andy Reid, who's a first ballot Hall of Famer. And um, I, I thought it would be cool for our guys to see an NFL facility. But the way that it all started, uh, because I don't have a personal relationship with Coach McDermott, is um, as a former manager, I've always taken great pride in the managers that we have had within our programs. and. Um, 
a former manager from Marquette is um, the assistant to the head coach. It was the first person that Coach McDermott hired. And so um, we now have two guys in the NBA that are former managers, uh, one guy in Major League Baseball and one guy in the NFL. And all of them were awful as managers, but I'm proud of what they've become as adults. And uh, so that's how it all started, but it was really cool. I did not expect Coach McDermott to spend time with our team, uh, but he said what you think he would have said uh, with more power uh, and gusto because he's an NFL, he's one of 32 guys in the world that does what he does. Let's go here and then we gotta get a microphone up front here. Uh, Buzz, having played Wisconsin when you were at Marquette all, all those years, uh, in preparing for this game, did, did that help, I guess? Are they pretty much running the same kind of stuff as they did under Bo, or was, that, was it helpful? helpful These two the guys could probably answer that better. Um, I do think that it's helped. Um, it was like uh, the Cowboys and Redskins on Thanksgiving Day every time Marquette played Wisconsin. Um, there are similarities in what they do. Uh, and how they do it. I would say that their practice itineraries are somewhat similar. There are, are also unique differences. Uh, part of it is because of their personnel. Uh, part of it is is probably what Greg is infusing into the program. Uh, that is his own beliefs. Not that that would be negative to Coach Ryan, but uh, there's, there's for sure similarities. Uh, going back and looking at all of my notes and practice plans and all of that stuff in the six times we've played them. I didn't do that at the start because I didn't want that infiltrating my brain as I was studying them for this year. Uh, but I looked at it all yesterday and there are, um, I showed our players uh, our practice plans. And uh, see, I've already told you this and look, I was saying that in 2012 too, you know, so there are for sure similarities. Let me go here on the left and then back here in the center. Buzz, I don't need to tell you that you surprised a lot of people uh, when you left Marquette to take on this this you know challenging rebuild. Mm. Here we are, year three. You're in the NCAA tournament. Um, is that timeline about what you expected? Are you ahead of schedule? What? Yeah, I don't know. I've never been smart enough to answer that question. Uh, obviously, it's been asked a lot. The first thing that I would say is uh, Marquette completely changed my children's lives, and forever I will be grateful. Uh, they hired me. I don't know many. Uh, ADs and presidents that will hire a head coach with a losing record, uh, particularly a losing record after only one season, particularly when they hire him and it's eight months removed from him resigning from that one year losing record. So uh, I know it's been uh, maybe said and described in different ways. Uh, I've, in the right way, uh, I wanna process it all um, cause I don't think that it's all me, but all of the things that were written in both of your papers, uh, in the journal Sentinel, uh, I have zero negative to say about anybody or any day that I was employed at Marquette. Incredibly grateful. Uh, the next thing that I would say specific to the timeline, uh, the timeline as of today is 1,090 days if you were counting at home. And, um, there's no way that you can, uh, be an agent of change as a single person in an organization and think that it will ever change. Um, Dr. Sands had been there three months before I was hired. Whip Babcock, our AD, had been there two months before I was hired. Uh, selfishly, I like that I was the first major sports hire uh, because they want that to work. But I think that um, in order to get to this point in this league that we've competed in, we finished in last place in year one. That was the fourth consecutive year that they had finished in last place. And multiple media outlets had said I'd committed career suicide. The thing was is I had a, a history of people saying that because that's what had happened when I resigned at New Orleans. And it's always uh, not gratifying. It's always another lesson for me that maybe what's written is not completely always the truth. But what can be quantified uh, other than words are the hearts of people that care. And what's happened at Virginia Tech is just a lot of people care. That's it. And uh, the 13 NCAA tournament games we played at Marquette before I was 40 years old, that happened not because of me, not because of Jimmy Butler, Jay Crowder. It's not that. 
It was a lot of people that cared. That's it. And uh, I've never looked at the job as, well, by this day we'll be successful, or by this day we'll be successful. This time last year we were playing in the NIT, and uh, I can't tell you how humbled I was by that. It was only the third time in the history of the ACC that there had been an eight-game improvement. In the history of, in my opinion, one of the best leagues ever, that there had been an eight-game improvement. But it was the first time uh, that that had happened from the last place team. And we did it in our second year. Uh, this year's team will only suit up seven, and we've made multiple decisions to redshirt guys because I believe it was right for their life not because we were making a push to go to the NCAA tournament. Um, and so to be in this position, I've never looked at it um, on a day basis. I've looked at it on today, did we do what was right to be sustainable for their lives in the long term? That's it. And it's not me. It's not Seth Allen. He's average at best. He has not received an all-conference vote. Uh, Zach Lede is below average at best. He has received one all-conference vote in two years. So there's 14 other head coaches, so that's 28 opportunities for a vote, and he's got one out of 28. So you, how, then, then how did it work? Well, it's just a lot of people doing a lot of work for the right reasons, and the intent of their heart is right. We've got time uh, for one there, and then we'll wrap up. Hey, Buzz. Joe Beamer, WBEN here in Buffalo. Um, it's documented that you and Frank Beamer have a great relationship. Have you talked to him since Sunday, and has he given you any advice going into this game? Uh, I love coaches in general, uh, particularly old coaches. Um, old people seem to think that I'm kind of like one of those wind-up uh, toys. You know, you just wind him up, and there he goes. Um, coach has been great to me from the very beginning. I met Coach uh, before my press conference at Virginia Tech, and uh, since he's retired, I would say our relationship has uh, increased by 100%. And that's because he has nothing to do other than watch Ellen every day. <laughs> and um, so I, I, I think that he just, he's more aware of what's going on. And I've been overly kind to him on purpose because I want somebody to do that to me uh, if I ever am able to get to that point. Uh, what most people that are retired say is make sure that you spend more time with your family and love them the way they're deserving of it. Uh, and the next thing is, is enjoy the moment because it's so hard to get. Just one more. Yep. Um, do you have a second half outfit in case you do sweat through your suit tomorrow? Yeah, I, I always do. Uh, I did it a lot in year one and year two. Um, what I tried to do is incorporate vests so that the sweating, I mean this in the right way, uh, it's the silliest thing ever, right? Uh, when you get your car fixed, does the mechanic sweat? <laughs> you know, the guy that builds your house, the carpenter, I think he sweats. And uh, I, I know it's funny, and I know I'm not the best looking guy in the world, but and I'm just working real hard. That's it, you know? And uh, I know it's, it's turned into such a, it's beyond silly to me to be, to be honest, semi-offensive, right? All I want to do is help our guys as much as we can. And if that means I sweat, like, who cares? That's kind of the way I feel. So I just wear a, a vest so it doesn't become uh, viral on Twitter. <laughs> Buzz, you uh, – uh, Last one. What? Buzz, you mentioned uh, Sunday that uh, uh, playing Wisconsin is kind of like playing Virginia – how has that maybe been beneficial to you guys this week in preparation? Well, uh, they would be the only team, Berman, that we've played that's similar in philosophy uh, relative to pace of play, relative to their defensive thoughts. Um, this Wisconsin team throws it inside much more than this Virginia team, but that's personnel specific. Uh, last year, Virginia's team threw it inside much more. Um, this will be West, Wisconsin's played 34 games, and uh, three of their 34 games, they've had 70 possessions. Three. Uh, this will be our 30. We've played 32 games, and uh, we've had 15. 
games that have had 70 or more possessions. The three games for Wisconsin that have had 70 possessions in it were all in overtime. And so just that in and of itself uh, is very UVA-like. You know, when we played Virginia the second time, uh, they were pace of play relative-wise. I, I don't say any of this to be negative. Um, they were the second slowest team in the country. Well, we're, we're not fast, but we're for sure not comfortable. Let's play real slow and walk it up. And so I think that'll be a lot of the game, you know. And at UVA, they just destroyed us on the offensive glass. And when you're playing a team that's as slow as they are, when they get a second opportunity, well, you're just going to guard them for 30 more seconds. And uh, their offense helps their defense, right? A team that plays as slow as they do, their defense is always going to be good. Because on offense, they hold the ball, sort of, if that's the right way of saying it. And so um, I've just told our guys, it's uh, UVA. They just happen to wear red. And they have uh, really good players. Um, that have experienced this time of the year in winning. Phil Dyer is here from the Athletic Communications Office at Virginia Tech. He can assist you uh, with Virginia Tech uh, students. Why don't we athletes bring and Dyer coaches? up and let them ask questions <laughs> to Dyer? <laughs> Thanks, Coach. You sweat too, Dyer.